I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage in Southern California. What we're going to do today on that charging system is I got out of the shop manual. So I printed out the pages so that we can just, you know, go through the factory step-by-step -step diagnosis thing. But it's better to be safe than sorry. Always. Let's put my wires back up. Most of the cloud threes that I work on that have air conditioning, I, unless they're a Concorde competing car and they want everything to be original, I usually upgrade to an alternator that will, since this system, the will put out maybe 30 amps. Um, that struggles at times, especially if you're at night with the air conditioning on and the headlights are on. So the air conditioning is trying to keep that clutch tight and also the uh, you run the fans and then the lights are taking it. So you're just marginal. You're not really keeping the battery up. You're just just barely getting enough to work all that stuff. So the alternators I usually put in are about 60. They're technically 63 amp, uh, which is double. And, and it's a real simple thing you do have to fabricate or get a bracket change, but uh, they, they're much more efficient. But the problem you run into when you convert to an alternator that puts out twice as many amps is that ammeter, every time you start, it's gonna peg. So the fix for that is to shunt it. So a shunt, like I said earlier, is a bypass, essentially. So what I do is on the ammeter in the dash, I, I take it loose, with the battery disconnected, of course, and I put a little jumper wire between the two leads. So what that does is it allows some of the current to go around the ammeter so it's not measuring everything that's going through it. And it's usually like a 18 to 22 gauge wire. It's not very thick, but that's enough to where when you start up the car, especially with a low battery and it's going to be working extra hard, uh, it doesn't peg the needle. Some because sometimes they stick for a while in the peg position. And uh, what it does is it keeps it below the 30. So you're not really reading true current. Like I said earlier, I don't think current's the best measure of your battery or your charging system. Uh, I think voltage is. And obviously the manufacturers do too, since that's what they went to on more modern cars. They have voltmeters rather than, oh, I'm not sure. So the problem with this generator also is it's heavy. I'm getting old. So it's hard to get everything lined up. This has to go in there. That wants to go in there, but not really. I'll figure that out now. There it is. At least that was pretty clean. There we go. I hope I'm not 
not scratch it up too much over there. Sorry about the silence, folks. I'm open to questions. That's the magic of the video camera is when they edit and post. I can talk about this other project. I'm working with some partners on another project that should be launching hopefully this weekend, finally, that is called garage -O -Matic. And what we are doing is we're trying to help enthusiasts and professionals alike uh, around the globe uh, work on these cars. Um, the Rolls-Royce and Bentley, as I'm sure a lot of you know, uh, it's really hard to find repair information. Uh, you, you look for Mercedes, BMW, Volkswagen, Ford, Chevy, any of those, and you can find pretty much everything you need somewhere online. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on the Rolls-Royce and Bentley. Currently, we th I think we have about 20 projects in the system. Uh, to how to do repairs on the post-war, basically, uh, Rolls-Royce and Bentley. And that means post-war World War II. And we're, gonna, I'm, we're doing really high quality videos up close uh, detailed step by step as if you're watching me actually uh, repair a car, do the job. And I use the tools that I use and which I have found over the years to be the most efficient way to get things done. I'm, I'm a professional, efficiency is essential. We're going to, yes. It's not. No. I don't know. With the AC on. Well, remember the ammeter. It's not telling you voltage in the system. It's telling you how much the generator's working. So with the AC on, like I said, you're gonna be drawing more current to try to keep that system voltage up there. So um, that's why it's pegging, because the generator's working a lot harder. Trying to get a good spot to get leverage to. Every car is a little bit different. We, uh, get in there. You see the AC hose configuration. Not so long. That's the best spot. Right there. So I want to get this pretty tight because we got the AC running on. I don't want it as loose as it was. 
uh, one thing to be careful on a six cylinder car is this, this model generator has caged roller bearings, both ends of the shaft. And the six cylinder car does not, it has bushings. And the bushings, if you tighten them too tight, you, will, you can damage that. It doesn't need it as much on the six cylinder because it doesn't, I think the AC will run off of a different belt. Uh, yeah, the alternator I use is a Delco, uh, General Motors, uh, self-regulated. There's no external regulated. The wiring conversion is very easy. And you're welcome to email me with that question. Uh, well, I make them and I look, I'm looking to go ahead and make a whole bunch of them so that we can just sell them on the garage matic We didn't finish that, that talk. The, the garage matic you're gonna have not only the video instructions step-by-step, step, but I'll have also a document with those steps written down and also the list of tools. And the nice thing about the website is it allow you to, if you don't have the tools and you wanna have all the right tools, you can buy them right from the website along with all the parts you need for the job. So it's, it's going to be really convenient. Uh, we're just starting now, so we only have a small library, and we look to build a huge library. Uh, and it will be on a request basis. What we're going to do is obviously take the highest volume requests and start knocking away at those. And I hope to you know, us to have two or three hundred videos in there, so that we can, anyone anywhere should can do pretty much any job on one of these cars uh, the right way, or at least my way. I'm not saying mine is the right way, but it's the way I've you know learned to do things over the 40 plus years I've been fixing.